Today I want to talk to you guys about five of my best tips if you want to sell to restaurants. And one thing that's great about selling to restaurants when you're a small farm or a market garden is they allow you to scale your production very quickly because they'll buy a lot of certain products and if you know what the market is demanding, if you know what these chefs are uh, looking for, they, they'll, it'll allow you to grow a lot of certain products and scale those products and move them in all one direction. So it makes it easy to move large volumes of things. So on my farm, for example, like I've sold to many different chefs over the years and my farm has been in different sizes throughout the years. I've been started at a half acre, was two and a half acres. I've grown all kinds of vegetables, but the, um, some of the crops, for example, that they allow you to scale is, for one, salad greens. You can be delivering boxes of salad greens for a restaurant opposed to having to bag them in individual bags and put them in a CSA or sell them at a farmer's market. Uh, radishes, we move a ton of radishes. I only sell them to chefs. So we'll have 50 foot beds of radishes and turnips. Turnips is another one and we'll crop that out and it all goes to just a couple chefs. So it me means that I can move a lot of product quickly. From a production standpoint, that's great because I can get it out of the ground really quickly and get something else in there. So it allows you to move volume. Yes, you are gonna sell things a little bit cheaper when you sell the restaurants, but that's okay. That's, that's the trade off that you make to move a lot of product in a short amount of time. So let's get into these top five. All right, number one. Fresh sheets, you gotta make fresh sheets. This is a fresh sheet. I write about it in my book, I show you how to make it, I even give you the template, you can download it on my website on how to make it, you can just copy mine, rip it off. Basically, what a fresh sheet is, is it is just a quick summary of what you're selling, what the price is, what the volume you're selling it in. It's just a really fast and easy way for you to communicate with your customers to let them know what you've got for sale and it comes out every single week. You want to be consistent with it, especially when you're getting started. Uh, it's very important to just pinging these chefs. To you know, these, these these guys have people coming at them all the time. If you're in a, a farm saturated place like I am, there's farmers knocking on the back door every single day, especially with the hip and you know the cool restaurants that all the farmers want to sell at everybody's bugging them. So you gotta stay on top of it, you gotta be consistent. And uh, one thing with Fresh Sheets is, uh, one little piece of advice, I mean there's many, but one little piece of advice is only list the things on the Fresh Sheet that you know you have a lot of. Because a bad situation to get in is where you list every single thing you have and you're listing things that you know you only have, you know, 10 pounds or 10 units of and so on and so forth. And then you're short. And so then you get more orders than you expected and now you've got to call all these people and say, oh, I know you ordered this, but I'm short. So you want to just list the things you know you have in abundance. And you know, what, what I would do with my close uh, relationships that I have with chefs that I've worked with for years is I'll list all the things on the fresh sheet that I have a lot of. And if I only know I have some of this and some of that, I'll just text message or phone or email my closest customers to say, hey, I have this for you, I know you normally want it, and then you don't list it on the fresh sheet. That way you're not gonna short new customers that you're trying to build a relationship with. You know, it's better to under-promise and over-deliver. Number two is have things in case lot volumes. So, so at a farmer's market, we're selling small units. We're selling bunches and bags and so on and so forth. But with chefs, we're selling things in case lots. And so that case lot, can be whatever you want it to be. You've got, like for example, I have case lot bags of radishes. So it's a five or six pound bag at whatever the price is, 25 bucks or something like that. You know, you, you set the price. And, and you just, you, you just wanna have these things in larger units because that way that incentivizes bigger purchases. But it also makes it easier for them because mo most restaurants, all restaurants, when they're ordering, they're looking at their distributor or wholesaler catalogs and everything's listed in case lots. It's a box of this, it's big bags of that, um, you know, it's groupings of this or that. So th you want to mimic that and do the same thing. So, you know, you're selling tomatoes in a 10 or 15 pound flat. You're selling a 10 pound box of salad mix or spinach or arugula or a two pound bag, a two pound case lot bag. 
things like that. And again, that stuff's in my book. That's even on my website. That link will be below. You can download that stuff for free. But you want to list things in a, in a, in a case lot. Number three is you, you got to follow up. When you're starting out with restaurants, because like I said, there's people calling them all the time, knocking on the door, you gotta follow up. So if you're building a new relationship, or a relationship with a new customer, and you've only talked to them a few times, but they're gonna go ahead and, and get an order, you're gonna, you're delivering that order, say on a Friday, you wanna follow up with a phone call, or a text message, or an email. Phone call's best, actually. If you can get them on the phone, that's best. Phone them and just ask them how the product worked asked what did, you know uh, was everything cool how much did you guys go through did did your customers like it just follow up and show that you care basically show them that that uh, you know you're putting them first and you want to make sure they're satisfied and through those conversations you're going to it's going to lead to many other things it's going to you're going to have conversations where you're just kind of shooting the breeze and they say, you know what, I like this, but you know what, it would be better if it was this way. Or I, I wish I would have had a little bit more. And you know, you take notes in these things and then you get to a point where you worked with a customer long enough that you'll know how much they're gonna use better than they do. And I mean, cause it's, it's easier for you to understand your little niche of bringing them the specific product than it is for a chef to know all the suppliers they're buying from. You know, it takes them a while to figure out what they, they're gonna need. Like I have one customer I've sold to my entire career of farming. I know what she needs every Tuesday and Friday, even when she doesn't know. If she's not, when she's not sure she needs something again, I know that she does, because I look back at the years of records that I've sold to her, and I can see the consistency. And so, you figure those things out. I mean, you, you figure those out through the conversations, through getting to know what they're using, what they like, what they don't like, but also just through the patterns of their orders. So following up is super key to building those relationships right at the start. Number four, super, super important one. I've done a video on this in a different way, but you want to set terms of payment. So, you know, that you can decide whatever that is and certain, and certain um, size restaurants have different terms, but what terms of payment means is when I deliver you product, you're going to either pay me COD, which is cash on delivery, or you're going to pay me in a set number of days. And so you wanna make sure that that's discussed and that's on the invoice and if, if it's a terms of payment like it's 14 days or 21 days or it's 30 days, that that's agreed on and then when they sign the invoice they and you keep that copy for yourself you know that they've consented to okay from 21 days from this invoice you're going to get paid and if you're not getting paid then you got to follow up again and that's a whole other can of worms I've got all kinds of stories regarding that but setting terms of payment is really important and when you're just starting out if, if you have if you don't have a lot of staff and you don't have a lot of infrastructure just doing things COD cash on delivery is the easiest way to go and there's a lot of restaurants that like COD if they're small if they're like you know a 20 tables kind of thing a couple kitchen staff COD can work for them because they've already got enough to do like these are owner operator type restaurants they've already got enough to do so when you show up the fact that they settle up right then and there is easier for them because then they don't have to do paperwork later. They don't have to flip through invoices and see who they owe money to. So smaller restaurants will do that. Larger restaurants won't. They just don't have the ability to do it and there's often many levels of, of uh, a hierarchy in that, in that restaurant. You know, the, the, the restaurant manager is the restaurant manager. They're not the person who's doing accounts payable or they're not the, they might not even be the person doing ordering. So there's all these different tiers and so on a bigger restaurant, you, you have to have terms of payment that are, you know, weeks or, you know, a month or 28 days or something like that. So that, that's just kind of part of it and if you're not ready to do that, then don't sell to those customers. If you're at a point where you need, your farm is really small, you're just starting out, you need cash flow, don't go out and seek out those kinds of customers because it does take time to get paid. A lot of my customers, the bigger restaurants that I sell to, at the beginning of the season, they I don't I don't get a check for two months. But then once two months is up, then they're on stream. I'm getting each invoice for a while, and that's just kind of how it is. But I understand that going in. So you want to make sure that you're clear about all these things and both parties are fully understanding what's happening and you both consent to it. Number five 
Be consistent with your deliveries. Set your delivery days, list these things on your fresh sheet. In, in the fresh sheet I have on my website, I've got right on the bottom, um, you know, delivery days are Tuesdays and Fridays. If, you're gonna, if you want a delivery on Tuesday, you gotta have your order in Monday morning. If you want a delivery on Friday, you gotta have your order in on Thursday morning. So you set those terms, but you gotta be consistent. So it's again, don't, don't over promise and under deliver, under promise, over deliver, but be consistent with these things. If you say, uh, you know, here's an example of under promising and over delivering with, with delivery days is, uh, at the beginning of the season, we just do Fridays. We don't do start doing Tuesday deliveries until until we get busier. But I will do Tuesday deliveries to some of my best customers, and so that's an under promise and over deliver type thing. Because then they're happy because they might call me on a Monday, and go, "Oh man, we got totally slammed over the weekend, and we sold out of stuff. Can we get something from you?" It's like, "Yeah, okay, we'll we'll deliver on a on a Tuesday, or you can pick up." You know, one of the great advantages we have as an urban farm being downtown in Kelowna is I've got chefs picking up all the time. I mean, right now we're delivering Tuesdays and Fridays, but we have chefs picking up on Mondays after the weekend, sometimes Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays. Who knows? And a lot of our customers are really close, so we can even, you know, do top-up deliveries, which we will do for our really good customers from time to time if they're close. But you want to be consistent with them, so set those delivery days and stick to them. And as far as delivering goes, figure out what you're if you're driving, figure out what your traffic patterns are and try to deliver when there's not bad traffic. Don't go out and do deliveries on rush hour, especially if you don't have a refrigerated truck because you will be sitting in traffic and in the summertime your produce will be melting. So you want to make sure that you're being as effective as you can with your delivery days and you want to be bringing good product to the, your customers as well. So I hope you guys have found that helpful. If you're new, Please hit the subscribe button right now if you want to see more stuff like this. And I notice I have a lot of new subscribers and many of you probably don't have my book. So I would like to extend a discount code. If you buy my book through my website, yes, it's not as cheap as Amazon, but consider it you're supporting me. I can't compete with Amazon shipping, but what I can do is offer some extra value. So if you hit that discount code down below, you can get my book with a product called the Digital Tools Package, which is a series of videos which explains how to use some of the spreadsheets and things that I write about in my book, how to use them in detail. So it's a bunch of extra content for free if you're interested in supporting me and reading my book. So hit that, that link below and check out the discount code. Talk to you guys later.